Hi everyone. So I'm going to explain how the lab equipment works and let's start with what the setup looks like. So this is the instrument cart. There's an oscilloscope. This oscilloscope has a waveform generator function as well. The oscilloscope paints the lines, the voltage lines on the screen to show you what the voltage is doing with respect to time. Uh, this is our multimeter. So it can measure voltage, current, or um, resistance. And this here is our breadboard, and this is what we will be using for prototyping our circuits. So we'll build our circuits here. And uh, so I'm going to focus on the breadboard, and in other videos, I'll explain how to use the other equipment. So now, uh, when we're using this breadboard, there's a switch in the back that we can flip. It's a rocker switch, and it and it'll turn on if there's power. And we notice when it's turned on, these LEDs light up. So this is for the 5 volts, for the 15 volts, and for minus 15 volts. So the uh, breadboard is turned on. The, the system is turned on. I'm going to turn it off and explain first how this breadboard works. So this is the prototyping area, and this is where you're going to put your circuits. I'll explain that in a moment. But first, I'm going to explain the power supplies that are available in this uh, breadboard. So now, here is a drawing of the power supplies showing them uh, the way they are. So up here, we have a 5-volt independent voltage source. Okay, so uh, the positive is going to the red uh, banana jack. And the negative is going to the black one. So the red one, that's plus 5 volts. And the negative one, that's essentially 0 volts. Now, uh, down below, we have a plus, we have a 15 volt independent voltage source and another 15 volt independent voltage source. Okay, and the way that they're configured is they're configured in series. So if you were to go across here, you'd have 30 volts. Right, because they're in series. Now, uh, at the point where they're joined together, we have a wire and it comes out through a place called common. Okay, so we can we can reference that as zero volts, and and then uh, the uh, banana jack above it will be plus fifteen volts. And then the banana jack below it will be minus 15 volts, okay? So you can see the plus and minus here, okay? And uh, now what's interesting, remember, these are independent voltage sources. So if you were to connect your circuit to the plus or minus 15 volts, it would have no relation to the 5 volts supply. So what you would have to do is connect the ground, let's say the ground wire, so somehow you have to connect this ground wire over to the negative of this, so you can have a system with plus 15 volts, minus 15 volts, zero, and plus five volts, okay? If you don't have this connection, let's say we break that connection, then we have no, no reference. So this is just floating, all it is is five volts across here. So now, Let's look a little bit deeper into this. So we see there are the banana jacks with all the voltages, and we see these little headers here. So there are eight, eight uh, holes in here. And so if we're going to build a circuit, like what we want to do in the lab, let's say we're going to build this circuit here. So we have four series resistors of one kilo ohms or a thousand ohms and a 15 volt supply. Okay, so let's uh, see what we can do to build it. So now, first of all, how am I going to get these uh, resistors on the breadboard? Well, we have to understand how all this works. So, this part of the lab shows you how things are connected. So we have a bunch of rows. These are indicated in yellow and there's five holes in them represented okay so so one of these is one of these so this is a row so there's five holes in there so you can consider that to be a node and you can plug wires in there 
the row above it is not connected to it. However, all of the holes in one row are connected to each other. Okay? Now, you see this break here? Well, there's no connection from, from to, to the rows going across the break. So these five holes are completely independent of these five holes. Okay? So that's how the main part of the breadboard works. Now, there's also holes that go in a column format all the way down. So there are two columns here. And so all the, all the holes in the first column are connected to each other, and all the rows in the second column are connected to each other, but these two are not connected to each other. The two columns are not connected to each other. So how do we use this, okay? I'm going to show you. So we want to build this circuit again. It's plus 15 volts with four 1K resistors. So I have 1K resistors here, and what's really good to do is, is build your circuit in a way that uh, it looks like the uh, uh, circuit that, that you've drawn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a resistor here, okay? So I have to push it through. It's got to make the connection with what's underneath it. Okay, that's a difficult hole, so uh, I'm going to try a different one. Okay, it went in nicely there. And then I'm going to put it into another hole. So it's in two separate nodes here now, okay? Two separate nodes. Now, to join two resistors together, I have to put the second resistor in the same row, okay? So I'm going to put it right beside it. So those two points are connected, and I'm going to continue the same pattern and, and put it in. Now I'm going to connect the next resistor in series the same way. So it's going to go to the hole next to the one I just did. So those two points are connected now. And then go down. And I have to make four of these, right? So I'll use one more. Plug it in. Bend it over and plug it in. Okay. So now what do we have? So now... We have these resistors all in a row in series, but we got to connect it to the plus 15 volts. So how do we do that? Well, we can get jumper wires. And look, I think I'll use a red one. And what we're going to do, so this is the plus 15, okay? So this banana jack is connected to this 8-pin header. So what I'm going to do is plug the wire into the header, okay? And then I'm going to connect to the row of the first resistor, okay? And then push it in, and it's connected. I can put it in any one of those uh, five holes, okay? And then they will all be connected to each other. Okay, so then I have to go to the negative of the 15 volts with the bottom. So I'm going to, hmm, I'll use the purple wire. Okay, so this is the negative of the 15 volts. So I'm going to plug it in there and plug it into the bottom node. And there we go. So now I've completed the circuit. And then if I want to make some measurements, I could turn on the power. I see the LEDs come on. And now we have current flowing. Now we actually have 15 volts. So let's make a, 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 some measurements. Let's figure out how to make measurements. So we have... Over here, we have our multimeter. It's set up uh, in volts, okay? And let's just double check. You know, we're expecting zero volts if we touch these uh, ends together. So it goes to zero, okay? So these cables are plugged in to the voltage uh, uh, port ports, okay? So now, let's see how we're going to make our measurement. Let's make sure we have 15 volts across this uh, whole circuit, okay? So this is a little tight, so I'm going to have to maybe move things a little bit. So now, I'm going to turn this a little bit because it's, it's tight. So here, let's, we're going to measure across here. And when we see the voltmeter, it says 14.9 volts. So that's close to 15. So, so we've got our right voltage, okay? And then we can measure the voltage across the resistors, okay? 
and so forth. Now, but when we're using this station, I'm just going to turn it this way so that it's a little bit uh, easier to use. We can plug our meter into these jacks here, and we'll and each jack is connected to the four or eight eight pin header uh, associated with it. And then we can put wires like this, jump wires across, and it's just like we were measuring before. So I put one for the positive uh, lead, and uh, maybe I'll use purple for the negative lead. Okay. I'm using purple for the negative lead and I'm going across and I'm plug plugging it in here. This is another way to make measurements. Okay. And then we can see again, we got 14.9 volts. Okay. And then the last thing I'm going to measure or, or show you how to measure is, is how to connect the waveform generator. So, so uh, this oscilloscope has a waveform generator that comes out of here and we can set it up in a certain way. So now uh, I just want to show you how, how the setup would go for this, how to, how to make a connection. So we have a BNC cable here. The outside part is ground and the center is the signal or the positive. Okay. And over here we have this barrel. That's the, the ground and the inside is the signal. So what we do is we screw this in because the, the, uh, there's a there's a little uh, slot here that plugs in and we've got to screw it in tight so until it uh, stops and then over on this side we can put uh, this uh, this splitter so this is, these are uh, banana uh, plugs on the other side and it splits the two wires so the ground which is the barrel goes to the right here where there's a tab. So this tab physically show, shows us where the ground is. And then we can screw this in place. You'll, you'll see it when you actually work with it. Okay, that, there it is. Okay, and then what we can do is plug it in. And if we want to inject a signal, this is going to be our common or our ground. And this is going to be our signal. So what we would want to do is make a common connection to our circuit ground. And in this case, we would plug into the header there. That's for the, for the ground of the waveform generator and make, connect it to the common of the circuit. Okay. And then wherever we want to put this signal, let's say we, we don't want to connect it to power. We can instead here, I'm just going to use yellow for the signal we can connect the signal over here and then we could uh, put an arbitrary signal through these uh, uh, resistors. What we're going to get into the waveform generation later when we talk about it, but I just wanted to show you the connections and how this cable works. Okay, so that's how we use this breadboard and you'll get lots of practice in the lab.